Back with another tier list, this time a little bit of a twist. As you can see next to me, we've got Bengal. He's gonna help me out with the second base tier list today, going from elite all the way down to backup for the guys who aren't very good. And we're gonna both kind of just pick where guys should go. It's gonna be a little bit of a collaborative effort on this tier list. So that way, if you guys are mad, it's not only at me, you're also mad at Bengal too. Yeah, I'm a little bit more casual, so I might have some uh, idiot takes, which should only make for better content. So drop a like on the video if you like seeing the tier list, wanna see more of it. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the baseball content coming at you and go ahead and complain in the comment section down below as well as check out Bengals channel Madden's about to drop if you like that kind of stuff Bengals your guy we read and care about all of your opinions of course let's do this all right so we're starting off with Adam Frazier who is having a weird year he's not hitting for average but he's hitting for power completely shifted completely shifted but I still think he's not very good I would put him in average average is where I was thinking for Adam Frazier just like a solid player works on the Orioles as like a platoon role hits righties well but there's just not a lot there he's gone the opposite and still is basically the same value all right Andres Jimenez having a weird season last year he was one of the best players f4 wise but this year not really looking for much power not really having a great season Babbit luck kind of going back down to earth yeah he was a guy who was just a little soft contact guy I don't think he's average though I think he's solid <laughs> All right. Where do you, where would you put him? For me, he's probably, uh, I don't know, because second base is a weaker position, to yeah. be fair. So he probably is actually near the solid tier. He is good. I just, you know, I do kind of value the guys that slug a little bit more, and that's just not really his game. But you factor in the stolen bases, and if he can hit for high average. Yeah. Good defense, too. Give you solid. Yeah. I mean, we can move these around, too. They're not set in stone. I believe this is Andy Abanez. Andy Abanez. And I think because of that hesitation of who is this guy, I think that I pretty know. much answers the question. He's going into backup. He had a good week stretch this year he's a contact guy but then if he's not getting his singles he's pretty awful so Andy Abanez I think is a easy backup Brandon Drury is he back yet for the Angels I don't he, he is okay he's he back almost homered about five minutes ago he's pretty good I feel like he's solid like he hits for power gets on base I think his value also comes from the fact that he could play a bunch of different positions I've been playing a lot of first base and then they got Moustakis and now guys kind of shift around so I think Brandon Drury is not all-star caliber just because like he's not good defensively either he's definitely a bit of a butcher at second base but he can swing it good bat for sure i like solid yeah brandon lau i think is gonna be an interesting one because to me brandon lau probably goes in the all-star tier but the last few years he hasn't played that much and he hasn't been as good i still remember what was it 2019 or 2020 where he just popped off went crazy like close to 40 home runs I yeah say. so i feel like i want to put him in all-star i might check the numbers before i do that yeah a problem for the review he's probably solid which man it just feels like there's a lot of like good second baseman yeah i mean they're they're good but not great lau has shown to be great in the past probably someone that could end up moving up at a later date yeah show a little more power again bryce terang started off great but i think that's because he was playing the mets and had a huge series against them otherwise the brewers i think have been trying to find anybody else to play that position to me bryce terang is going to go on backup you agree that's fine. I don't really care about Bryce Terang. Bryson Stott. Ah, I don't believe in him one bit as like being a good baseball player, but he's hitting like 300 and like playing good defense at second base. He's kind of just good. I think if Andres Jimenez is solid, Bryson Stott after this year is absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If he you're going to. He's doing it. Yep. No, he really has. He hasn't slowed down and moving to second base. Definitely the right position for him. Shortstop never should have been there. So this was a little bit of an older tier list. So it had Christian Arroyo, but this should be Luis Rios, who is probably on the borderline of average backup i think he's average okay if we both can kind of go into the average spot christian arroyo aka luis rios will go into average i want to say he had a decent year last year i think he's just like a league average hitter who plays okay defense i think at second base it might help more than when he was playing third because you're gonna get that offensive value go up a little bit and the glove i'm sure is better there but yeah i don't know it seems like a really like insignificant move that the red Sox made here's gonna be the one that everyone freaks out about edward julian julian edward julian edward julian the canadian he's playing really really well but he's like completely popcorn muscles like totally I don't think this good as his numbers are stating but I put him in solid I think I just I feel like people in the comments are gonna be like oh is he not a leader an all-star and that's just foolish well he's, it's also we haven't really seen enough of it it's yeah. his first year great eye at the plate great discipline I think I used to take a lot of stock in the guys that hit the ball really really hard and he could grow into that for sure actually but I think the guys that are able to pull the ball in the air can have the slug of guys that hit the ball harder just because of the bat to ball skills and the time 
climbing. Alex Bregman was a little bit of that guy in the for, beginning for of his sure. career. Yeah, so we'll put Edward Julien. Jose Ramirez still does it. True, but He hits true. the ball a little harder. Yeah, but we'll put him in solid. I think that's fair. He's pretty comparable to these guys right now. This next guy is not, though. Elvis Andrews, the fact that he's still playing baseball every single day professionally is honestly quite shocking to me. I think he's a uh, backup tier. Yuck. <laughs> Come on. Why are you asking me about Elvis Andrews? Just want to make sure you agree that Elvis Andrews shouldn't be playing every day. The White Sox are a joke. 2013, I might I might argue with you about backup, but it's 2023. And he's still playing. Props to him. Props to him, but he's not very good anymore. How about you get me started on Glaber? Give me give me your fight. Glaber is an all-star. Okay. And he's one of the better hitting second basemen in the league, for sure. When he's hot, he's hot. I, I know he's had some stretches where he's been bad over the past few years, but I think Glaber's truly found it again. And he's been the only piece in the Yankees lineup when Judge has been out that's done anything. I think he's definitely better than all these guys, which I think is fair. So that surely puts him in all-star, but it feels weird to put him in the tier right under elite because I think there's more of a gap. So I want to check the numbers. Yeah, Glaber's like top 10 in WRC plus among qualified second basemen. The all-star category is probably fine. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you there. He's having a good year. He's been good in the past before. He's been consistent as well. I think he struggled for a little while to kind of determine what type of player he was going to yeah. be. He had no discipline. He was only hitting for home runs. And then he's like, I'm going to be a, a balanced hitter. I'm going to show more discipline. And then he lost all power, couldn't hit the ball at all. And now the two sides are finally coming together. And I think we're seeing the player that he could eventually become. And I think he also for sure got hurt by the fact that 2019 year where he hit 39 home runs. Everyone's expecting 38. 38. Everyone's expecting that again. That's just not the player he is. Bouncy balls and just a little bit of luck there. But I can see him in all-star. Hassan Kim is a really interesting interesting one because he's playing out of his mind this year he's playing really really well phenomenal fielder like one of the best second basemen in baseball defensively and he's swinging the bat really well he's just gotten better and better and better every single year this season i think he has the argument to get into elite but that feels aggressive it's coupled with absolutely elite defense yeah like i might struggle to put him in elite because oh it's one year of elite offensive production but if we're gonna heavily weight this season i don't know how you put him anywhere else other than elite he's He's one of the best defenders in the game, and the bat is really, really strong this year. He yep. just does everything so well. Statistically, one of the best hitting second basemen this season. For a guy that you probably wouldn't have guessed going into the season, I'm going to put him in elite for now. I think we'll see how many guys end up there, and we can make adjustments, but right now, based on this, he's elite. This is, I believe, Harold Castro, and he's going to join the rest of the guys that you question. Who is this? Uh, not good. Ba bad baseball player. There's kind of no way around it, and if you can't hit in Colorado, it's going to be tough for you to hit anywhere else, so I'm going to put him in backup. Jeff McNeil. <laughs> I don't know what to do with Jeff. I feel like I want to give him a similar vibe of Andres Jimenez, where they both had like great seasons last year. Jimenez was better. Jimenez was better. But McNeil, like for his career, he's like a 125 OPS plus guy. And there's two seasons mixed in there where he has been bad, this season included. I think he's like an all-star caliber player, but this year he's been horrendous. There's no doubt about it. But I do want to put him in solid because I think he's more along the lines of these guys than anybody up there. And I think he's better than the guys below that. What do you think he's going to do next? year though is the question i still feel like he bounces back but i will say this is where my mets bias comes in for you guys i like hate the player profile that jeff mcneil has for every single other player in baseball but i love him because he's a met i think he's average <sighs> Interesting. I can't put him in average. I'm putting him in solid. I'm putting him in solid. <laughs> like the pedigree is for sure there. Yeah. But also he's been bad. His whole entire reason that he was able to hit so well for average was he hits it where they ain't. Correct. Bat to ball skills. They just are not shifting. Yeah. They're not allowed to anymore. And we're kind of seeing that he doesn't hit for power. No. He's a great utility guy, but I don't really care in a second base tier list. Yeah. I, I think that's probably where I'm getting a little skewed too is his value is better outside of just playing second base because he actually plays good outfield. G1 Bay. Yeah. About backup right i mean there's there's no way around it he steals bases like he's he's a fun fast little guy but uh on and off the field not great Yo. <laughs> The next one, Jonathan India is interesting. I'm yeah, like, because I feel like he probably is average. I feel like he's probably overrated. Like, he's just not that good outside that rookie year and in, in COVID season, right? That was COVID year. He was the rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. My bad. 2021, Devin Williams, rookie of the year 2020. But it's just like, he hasn't ever been that good. And it feels like he's getting pushed out of Cincinnati. Yeah, kind of the odd man out. For me, Jonathan India, not very good defensively. The bat has been good enough. He's He's been hot, kind of like Glaber. He's been hot for stretches. But but nothing super consistent outside of the rookie year. Probably go, I mean, I'm average to solid. I just value the bat a little bit more. I think I'm 
going to put him in solid right now, but that might be one that moves down because it's just, it's tough to figure out. I don't think he's like with Adam Frazier and Luis Arias. That's where I get the, the trouble with. Matt McClain shortstop, Ellie's third, right? They really move around quite a bit. Okay, well, that's where they're going to go. Jose Altuve. To me, this one's one of the easier ones. I yeah. feel like there's no explanation. He is arguably one of the best second basemen in baseball. We saw him the other night at the Yankee game. Roped a double off Luis Severino. Really just had to rub some salt you in the wounds. could do that right now, so. Yeah, could do that, but uh, <laughs> Jose Altuve, he's awesome. He's sick. Catal Marte. Got to be one of the most underrated players in baseball. I feel like he's, he's back. He's, he had a down year, and it, we all go, oh, it was just flash in the pan, but it's, I don't think it is. Don't even worry about playing the outfield anymore. Just play second base. Crushes baseballs. Good all-around player, and part of the reason why the Diamondbacks have had a huge season this year, even though they've kind of slowed down a little bit, but Catal Marte, totally back, like you said. Colton Wong, dfa uh, since then, so just put him in the backup. He's bad. No, the Mariners don't want him. They said, hey, anybody but you at this position, please. Luis Arise. If I say anything, I will be in trouble. I think we both agree he is not in their tier whatsoever. And it seems crazy because Hassan Kim is like, what is this guy doing here? Yeah. But he's been so good this year, and you're like, well, Arise is. His batting average is mm -hmm. 370, which is nuts. Nuts. I don't know how sustainable that is. He totally could just be bad one year. Doesn't play defense. No. We, we saw it with the Twins. He was just a fine player. Yeah. And it still played no defense. Offers nothing on the bases. <laughs> no. Only playing second base because second base is an open position. He yeah. played first as well. He is a weird player. I wish he had more slug to him. I know it seems crazy to put a guy that's hitting 370 in all-star. Way better all-around players. Yep. And I value that more. No, I agree with you. Luis Arise is a solid player for sure. All-star because of how he's playing this year. But I think he definitely is more so in this tier unless he's hitting 370. The guy almost hit 400. Give him some respect. But yeah, not that good. But he's good, if that makes sense. Luis Garcia. This guy, at some point in his career, is going to have a monster season. I know it. He's way too good not to. He's the Javi Baez of second baseman. That's that's his ceiling. Did a really cool thing this year. He's never walked, but he bumped it up from like 2 or 3% to like 6% this year. And his K rate is like 12%, which is crazy low. I do think he is probably bang on average, though. Like, I think he should play every day. He'll figure it out. He's also weirdly so young. And I feel like in our fantasy league, he's been picked up and dropped so many times by myself and I think Antonio as well. He's one of those guys I just won't touch. Just completely avoid. Marcus Simeon, or if you guys caught uh, those twins that play basketball at Miami, she called him Marcus Seaman. Did you see that? No. It's a funny video. I'll show you later. <laughs> Marcus Simeon's elite, though. He is arguably the best second baseman in baseball. He's a little bit of a compiler, a little bit. Definitely just like plays 162 every year, so his numbers always have are, are high counting wise. Ton of value to that. Ton of value, though. He never gets hurt, plays a great second base all around. Very, very good player. I thought Simeon was fake back when he was like top five MVP with the A's, and then he did it with Toronto playing at Little League Park in Buffalo. He's for sure the real deal, and I can say it confidently now that he doesn't play in the AL East. Michael Massey, where's he going? He had a hot week against the Yankees, and he's still terrible. Still bad backup. <laughs> I mean, shout out to Michael Massey if you're watching, but I don't think you are, and I mean, that would be, he'd be oh, like, this is numbers. he'd be like a masochist to watch a second base tier list video if or you're a masochist. Oh, <laughs> don't like that. How is Mookie Betts on here? I put Mookie Betts on here. He's, play, he's played so much second base. He has. He plays a lot. He's going to be on second base and right field for this video, but it's just crazy how well he plays second base as well. Like nothing is slowed down. One of the best seasons of his career so far. I think outs above average doesn't love him because it's a range based metric, but it, uh, sure handed as anybody. He's just a really good baseball player. Yeah. As cliche as that sounds, he just does everything so well. Hits for contact, pulls the ball in the air for power, has the best arm, runs the bases. Played shortstop this year. He's unbelievable. So yeah, he's going in elite. He might not be like an elite defensive second baseman, but don't care. His bat is so good that he's it would just... He's the best hitting one there, but yeah, at the top. for sure. Nico Horner. Nico Horner to me feels like he should be in solid because he has the good glove and he's basically a league average ish hitter at the worst he's probably whatever but at his best he was like kind of an all-star ish caliber player last year so i feel like i want to put him in solid what do you think i think he's like the inverse of jonathan india i think he's got the really amazing glove whereas jonathan india you hope has the amazing bat at the position even though it still is up and down i like him great defense i mean one of the best defenders in the league you just gotta hit a little bit more nolan gorman man on your fancy team i'm gonna let nolan you gorman bias. start it off with him super young strikes out so much Swing and miss rate, super high, but that's going to happen when you hit for so much power. And it's easy to say if you take out his worst stretch, he's amazing. Yeah. Has dealt with some injuries, was so hot at the beginning of the year, and then so cold in June. But outside of June, he's really been a truly elite hitter. Despite the whatever defensive value and base running, he is one of the best bats at the position in the league, and he's still super young. So it, it could get better. I, I like him a lot. I think uh, at least solid. 
I was put, gonna put him in All Star. I, I felt like All Star was the spot that. because he definitely is a butcher at second base. Horrible at the position. Doesn't play it well. Probably is more of a DH or maybe move him to first base at some point. But he can mash. Mash is probably for sure. got close to 25 home runs this year. Yeah. Which I mean, compare that to everybody else on the list. I don't know who else is there if anybody outside of Mookie. Yeah. No, it'd be tough. It would be tough. So I, th I think All Star see a little bit more before he starts getting in that elite conversation. I think. Now this one will be fun for those of you who've been uh, watching the channel, following me forever. This is the most overrated player in baseball, Ozzy Albies, in case you didn't know. And I still stand by that. I got all the stats to prove it. That being said, I don't think he's bad. I've never said he was a bad player. To me, Ozzy Albies is like very much a top 10 second baseman in the all-star tier. I would normally be with you. He is having such a great season. He's, again, doing what I talked about earlier that I really, really like is when these guys pull the ball in the yeah. air and it's the home run to fly ball rate. I think for Ozzy Albies, it's really, really high. And this season, he's just been an extra base hit machine. He has been. And if you're going to rank Lindor so highly, and I get it, elite defense. Yeah. But I think Albies, based on this year, if Hassan Kim is elite, I would throw Ozzy Albies in that same okay. tier. I think you got to give credit where it's due. And this season, he's been spectacular. So my whole thing with Ozzy Albies is, I think for sure, All-Star. I can see why people would say elite. Counting numbers, some of the best, like you just mentioned. And there is value to those that I think sometimes get lost in those like more calculated numbers, like a WRC+, plus, which I'm now going to cite, because Ozzy Albies is eighth amongst second basemen in WRC+. Plus. Still, again, one of the best in the league in terms of hitting, but I feel like it gets overblown. Atlanta low-key, an absolute bam box. Balls just fly out of there left and right. So his numbers are a little bit skewed. Not very good in the field. He's like very average at best at second base. And his WRC plus numbers are similar to like Whit Merrifield, Bryson Stott, Brendan Donovan. And nobody would ever say those guys are elite hitters. So for me, that's my argument why I put him in all-star, not elite. I hope I can convince some of you at home, but I know most of you heard me say the most overrated thing as bait, because that's what I like to do. And you're furious. You've already cut the clips and post them on Twitter. Tyro Estrada, I feel like the definition of a solid ball player. I would love him on my team, but if he's one of my best players, I don't feel great. Here's the thing with Tyro. I think the gloves really come a long way and the advanced metrics love him yeah. this year. And the bat was really, really good for the first couple months of the year. I think he's since cooled off a little bit, but I think when you're talking about the complete package, I think honestly, there can be an all-star argument to be made. Okay. It's just that he really just stopped hitting recently. He had an injury, so coming back from it, maybe that's a little bit too. I feel like I'm going to move him into solid and I think I'm unfortunately going to move my boy Jeff maybe down to average because I feel like Tyro Estrada is a better player. Yeah, Jonathan India is, is on I the think, borderline as well. Yeah, I think he might move down to average as well of guys who are just like, we know there's more left in there, but they did not show it this year and it's a little concerning. I'm a football guy. I feel like second base is like the running back mm. position where these guys, not, not to say that they're replaceable in the same way, but it's really tough to differentiate when some of these guys are so close. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Drury from uh, Jonathan India, I don't think is super significant in general. Yeah. Even though the numbers this year are obviously different. And Drury was awesome last year too. But they're like pretty similar players. I kind of like how you described that. Second base is the running back. That feels like there's just a lot in the middle and they're all relatively similar. Whit Merrifield is another one of those guys that I feel like is a lot like the rest of these guys in the middle. I know he made the all-star team. I'm just simply not putting him there. I don't believe he's an all-star caliber second base. He's having a good year, but like there's really no numbers that prove he's better than any of the guys that are in All Star. He's right another now. fine player. Yeah, like I think he's solid. Yeah. I think he's solid. Former Gamecock as well. It makes me feel better about moving these guys down too. And then the last but not least, Zach Geloff. I'll tell you what, no stats. Haven't seen any of them. I've watched him play a couple times. He's a good little ball player. I think he is a good little I, ball I player. I like him. And that's I think Monkski's right about him. Monkski might be right. Shout out Monkski. We'll give you this one. A lot of extra base hit power from him. Five home runs, four doubles, and a triple. I think in 18 games. There's definitely a little pop in that bat. Definitely Definitely fun. He steals base. I think he's one of the first players in baseball history, possibly, to steal five bases and hit five home runs in like their first 18 games. It's a weird stat that I saw. Very, very specific. But I think he goes in the solid. I would do that. As I well. think he goes in the solid. And again, it kind of solidifies more of this middle to bottom range and where the guys go. Second base, like you said, is very fluid. Depending on the season that you have, you move up and down. It's a rotating door. And I feel like like a lot of the shortstops that we see right now playing are going to eventually become second basemen in their older years, like a Trey Turner. Francisco Lindor, Xander Bogarts type thing. But uh, right now, I feel good about this one. How you feel? I keep seeing Christian Arroyo, who's supposed to be Luis Urias. It's throwing everything off in my head. But otherwise, I think it's a good one. You guys can let us know in the comment section down below what you agree or disagree on. I know Ozzy Albies is going to be one of them, so can't wait to read that. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed, as well as subscribe, and make sure you check out Bengals channel, upload Madden, the new games, coming out soon. So it's like a little talk show promotion, the way you come on to promote a movie. Of course, I'm doing, I'm doing a great job. I'm a podcast professional now. So check them out. Link in the description. And 
And uh, yeah, that's where I'll wrap it up, guys. Over my face will be my most recent upload. Over Bengals face will be a video YouTube says you should watch. So you should click through those. Thank you for watching. <coughs> and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching. <laughs>